On the Lord's Day, we, we have a lot of folks who are missing, a lot of people traveling, and uh, we certainly pray that they will have safety, have those visiting with us. I'm so glad to see Juan and Ann with us. Uh, they said they've been threatening me to come, but they made it this time, and I'm glad of that. Um, and uh, glad to have those able to be back. Um, was really concerned about Allie, and she's better. Thankful for that. And uh, others that, uh, you know, deal with issues of life that we're probably not even aware of. And they make a lot of effort to be here. And we appreciate that so much. You, you might, might want to turn, turn in your Bible Bibles to Psalm, Psalm 10. 10. Psalm 10. 10. We'll, we'll start there, there uh, here in uh, just, just a minute. minute. As, as we've, we've been, been trying to do, as we have uh, been... been Many, Many of us trying to read through our Bibles, Bibles, trying to bring lessons that are part of that daily reading that we've been doing. And this time, I'm going to hopefully going to two different places. Psalm 10 would be the first one. The second one would be Matthew 23. But it's so important that we stay in the Word. And hopefully we are developing that daily habit of reading something in our Bible every day. Now, if you can do a systematic plan that will take you all the way through the Bible Say in a year's time, that's wonderful. But be in the Word. That's where our faith comes from. So faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Romans 10, verse 17. And so here we are, week 33. And it's just getting by all too fast. As the kids who have gone back to school will tell you, it just happens too quick. Uh, these weeks just fly, just fly by. But what you would have read this past week would have been... 2 Kings 15 and 16, and Isaiah 1 through 6, and the whole book of Micah, and then Psalm 9 and Psalm 10, and then Matthew 21 through 25. And there's so much there. And, and uh, you know, that's the challenge for me sometimes. It's, it's not, what am I going to talk about? But how do I limit what, what to talk about? And, and so as we look at Psalm 10, I think that there is an idea sort of embedded in Psalm 10 that might not be one of those just kind of jumps out at you, but I hope that, that you'll see what I'm talking about as we look at this psalm. So in Psalm 10, in verse 1, it says, Why do you stand afar off, O Lord? Why do you hide in times of trouble? The wicked in his pride persecutes the poor. Let, Let them, them be caught in the plots which they have devised. For the wicked boast of his heart's desire. He blesses the greedy and renounces the Lord. The wicked in his proud countenance does not seek God. God is in none of his thoughts. Go we'll pause right there. There's something I think that's very relevant there to us. As we come to, to verse 4 especially. Something that has that that, that we could call and has been called practice atheism. You think about an atheist. An atheist is somebody who says they do not believe in God. Now there have been some famous atheists that on on their deathbed, like I think it's Robert Ingersoll, he was a, a, a big advocate that there is no God. But on his deathbed, he said, "God, if there is a God, save my soul if I have a soul." So he had that. He had that doubt, didn't he? And I wonder how often that's really true. That those who claim to be atheists, they really might have their doubts. Because you go to any civilization in the entire world, and you will find that they either currently or they once worshipped something. There is something inherent in us that I believe it's because we're made in God's image is part of the reason that we know that there's a higher being. There's something more than what we can see. Now, we understand who God is because we have His revealed work. But in some sense, God is worshipped everywhere. And so to say that you just don't believe in any of that well, that's, that's quite a statement, isn't it? So I think there are some who will say that. But then there are those 
who have claimed to be believers, but they act like atheists. And that's the point, he, one of the points he's making here in Psalm 10. Oh, you claim to believe in God, but you sure don't act like it. And so it's like you might as well not. I mean, it's practiced atheism. And so it says then in verse 4 again, In his pride the wicked man does not seek him. In all his thoughts there is no room for God. And that, that's the problem, isn't it? And that's how we can be. If we're not careful, we'll get so caught up in this life. And God is just way back on the list somewhere. That He is just not our priority. In all of His thoughts, there is no room for God. That's the NIV. The uh, New King James Version that I read say God is in none of His thoughts. He just doesn't think about God. And so is that better than an atheist? <laughs> It's really practiced atheism because God is just not in your world, not in your, in your life. Now, I like the uh, English Standard Version. It says, In the pride of his face, the wicked does not seek him. All his thoughts are, there is no God. Well, you know one of the effects of that, we'll talk about that more in just a minute, is if there is no God, there is no accountability to God. And I think that's the point with many. I think many who claim to be agnostic, and agnostic is one, well, I'm just not sure if there's a God. I think it's the idea of being accountable that's part of the motivating thing behind, behind that. Look at, uh, have your Bibles, let's uh, you, Kind of save your place there at Psalm 10. But I'm going to Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. Here is a very scathing passage that Paul is um, saying about Gentiles. He talks to, in, in Romans, he talks to the Gentiles and, and then he talks to the Jews and sometimes talks to both. But here in chapters 1 and 2 especially, he's talking to the Gentiles. And he says in, in verse 21, because although they knew God, they did not glorify Him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. And then look at verse 28. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind to do things which are not fitting. He says they knew better. Now they didn't want to admit there's a God, in their thoughts, there is no God, like the psalmist said, Psalm 10, verse 4. And here the Gentiles were living. At, Paul says you are without excuse. You know better. But you're living as if there's no God. Oh, and they had, uh, they had quite a, a, a range of things that that kind of thinking leads to. And I, again, I think that's why people either like in their minds, oh no, there is no God, or well, I'm not sure if there's a God, because they want to do what they want to do. And so we, we find if, you, if we continued on in Romans 1, and that's not even counting, we'll skip verse 26 and 27 about all the problems with homosexuality, but just starting in verse 29, after they uh, didn't like to retain God in their knowledge, in verse 29, being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil-mindedness. They are whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents. You just keep going down that list, couldn't you? And so that's, a, that's where that kind of thinking leads. Oh, there is no God. I do what I want to do. It's interesting to me, one of the things, when, you know, on one hand, in verse 28, he says, they did not like to retain God in their knowledge. And then in verse 30, says they're haters of God. That's one thing I never have quite understood about atheists. They get all angry with you about God. And, and, uh, and not, you not believing in evolution and you not believing this or that uh, like they do. And they get all angry about God this and God that. And I'm thinking, wait a minute, you don't believe in God. Who are you angry with? How can you be angry with something you don't even believe in? But they are, I think, because, again, down deep, 
It just could be a God. And while they might not understand or appreciate or, you know, whatever in their mind about God, that does not eliminate that there is a God. But people act as if there's not. And that's, again, the idea of practice atheism. You might as well be, because you're acting like it, is what he's saying. So we pick up, go back to our reading in Psalm 10. In verse 5, his ways are always prospering. Now this is, this is talking about, the psalmist is talking about, it seems like with the wicked, who have no room for God in their life. It says, his ways are always prospering. Your judgments are far above, out of his sight. As for all his enemies, he sneers at them. He said in his heart, I shall not be moved. I shall never be in adversity. <laughs> Quite a bold statement. But there are those who think that. I, I'm just going to do what I've been doing. I'm just going to keep living like I have been living. The Lord said this in Matthew 24 and verse 48. He said, But if that evil servant says in his heart, My master is delaying his coming, and begins to beat his fellow servants, and to eat and drink with the drunkards, the master of that servant will come on a day when he is not looking for him, and at an hour that he is not aware of. Like, you were acting like there is no God. <laughs> One day he's going to show up. And, and then the reality of it is going to be it's too late. You're too late. And, and an hour that he is not aware of. Uh, Isaiah said in, in uh, chapter 56 and verse 12, Come, one says, I will bring wine, and we will fill ourselves with intoxicating drink. Tomorrow will be as today, and much more abundant. Just eat, drink, and be merry, as the saying is. That no need to stop sinning <laughs> if there are no consequences from God. See, that's, that's what they don't want to admit to. And then, on a more direct level, there's no need to obey God today because we're just going to keep doing tomorrow what we did today. We're going to do the next day what we did today. So there's no need to go ahead and, and finally obey the gospel because we're just going to keep going like it's going. And so we act like there's no God. Surely, uh, if we really acknowledge there is a God, and that God said about His Son Jesus that one day He's coming back, and you don't know when that's going to be. And yet we act like it's not going to be today. <laughs> and it's not going to be tomorrow. And I don't think it'll be the next day. Well, we're acting like the atheists when we are having that kind of, of mindset. So back, back to Psalm 10. And so... Um, we'll skip on down to, uh, to verse. Um, let's see what I want to skip. Um, he keeps talking about how the wicked are acting, and then we come down to verse 11. He has said in his heart, God has forgotten. He hides his face. He will never see. <laughs> kind of sounds like a child, doesn't it? <laughs> Mama never know. Dad never know. I remember my sister used to tell stories and sometimes they listen to the to the Facebook live and so if they're listening I, yeah I'm talking about <laughs> about you but my my mom had my, mom, my sister had twin girls and when they were still in their in their baby beds they had figured out one of them had figured out how to climb out and then she would climb out and go get the other one help her out she hadn't figured it out yet. Sounds like two other twins, I know. But um, anyway, they also have forgotten, or maybe not fully aware, they, there's a baby monitor in the room. And so as they got a little older, they were still in, they were kind of at the tail end, I guess, of being in baby beds because they're figuring out how to get out. And anyway, my sister was listening in on this conversation. And she hears some, something about, Mom won't know. So that catches her attention, you know. So mom, uh oh, what are they up to? And, oh yeah, she'll find no mom, she she won't ever know. We're not gonna tell her. And so one of them climbs out and gets out and goes helps the other one out. And she just hears this little conversation. I don't remember now what they were up to, knowing those two, there was no telling. There are other stories I could tell, but but um but the, but the point is they figured they could get away with it. 
whatever their little, little two-year-old or whatever my age they were, mine, because as it says there, he said in his heart, God has forgotten, he hides his face, he will never see. That's why it made me think about it. It's kind of childish in a way, isn't it? But, but again, you might as well be an atheist. If, if that's your mindset, oh, God will never know. He'll never see. Do you believe in God or not? People think they can hide in the cover of darkness. The Lord talked about that in John 3 and verse 19. He said, And this is the condemnation that the light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. For everyone practic uh, practicing evil hates the light, and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. When is it that you most want to make sure your doors are locked at home? It's at night, isn't it? When is it we worry the most about walking across some parking lot? Maybe it's late at night. When is it that we worried about our children getting on home now? It's getting dark. We need to get on home. As they gotten older than we knew, after a certain time in the night, nothing good happens. It's that cover of darkness. And so that's what the Lord is talking about. For everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his deed should be exposed. What if there is a God who does see, who does know? Well, we're going to act like there's not. Well, you're practicing atheism when you do that. And then uh, back to Psalm 10. Arise, O Lord, in verse 12. O God, lift up your hand. Do not forget the humble. Why do the wicked renounce God? He has said in his heart, you will not require an account. That is, goes back to that idea we've been talking about. People think it, they're just going to get by with it somehow. And yet, Hebrews 9, verse 27 says, And as it is appointed for men to die once, but after this, the judgment. There is going to be a day of judgment. There is going to be a time that we have to give an account. Again, I think that's why some decide that they're agnostic. Because they're living in a, in a way they know if there is a God, He would not approve. And unfortunately, sometimes we as Christians almost act like there's no God that sees what we're doing or what we're not doing or somehow does not know what we're thinking. Well, we're practicing then atheism. In 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 10, about the judgment, he says, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. You know, whatever kind of person you are, you will have to give an account to God. Would you rather appear before God with, with your friend Jesus right there? Or somebody the Lord says, I never knew you. The Lord said, you are my friends if you do whatsoever I have commanded you. When we get there on that great judgment day, I, I don't know how it's going to be. The Bible is not that specific about it. But in my mind, I picture there's God, the Father, and there's Jesus, and then here I am. I'm convinced more and more the Holy Spirit's going to be there somewhere. It, the Bible just does it give us that information and when I come before God I, I want it to be a familiar thing don't we come boldly to his throne when we pray and so I'm hoping some of that is still there I think it will be when well, here we are standing before God and I know Jesus and Jesus knows me oh I won't stand there perfect the only hope any of us will have, you'll stand there forgiven. And that's because you know Jesus. And, and so we all are going to be there. And, and so we need to understand that it, there's a time coming. Unlike the atheists might want to think that there's not going, but there's a time coming when we will give an account. Some mistake God's long-suffering and the fact that he hadn't come back yet. And somehow, he either doesn't exist or maybe he's indifferent. 
Peter talked about that in 2 Peter 3 and verse 4 and saying, Where is the promise of His coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. You know, it's just every day, the next day. And that's what I, why I mentioned earlier. Those who put off obeying the gospel are assuming that the Lord's not coming back today and He's not coming back tomorrow and so on. The Lord is not slack concerning His promise. As some count slackness. But His long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. The Lord is just being merciful. He wants you to come to repentance. He wants you to turn back to Him. Thankfully, He's right now, he, He's exercising that mercy of His. As He says, He's long-suffering toward us. He doesn't want us to be lost, but it's not going to last forever because He has said, the Lord will come when you least expect it. And then in verse 14, But you have seen, for you observe trouble and grief, to repay it by your hand. The helpless commits himself to you. You are the helper of the fatherless. The psalmist, after being disturbed about the prosperity of the wicked, turns his thoughts back to who God really is. God, I know you know. I know you care. I know you are the helper. Uh, the helpless commits himself to you. In fact, you are the helper of the fatherless. The Hebrew writer said in chapter 4 and verse 13, And there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give an account. He knows. Never think God doesn't know. And so as we look at that passage then, what did we see? In his pride, the wicked man does not seek him. In all his thoughts, there is no room for God. Verse 6 that the wicked thinks, I shall not be moved, I shall never be in adversity. In verse 11, God has forgotten. He hides his face. He will never see. Verse 13, you will not require an account. And then in verse 14, the psalmist said, but you have seen. For you observe trouble and grief to repay it by your hand. That's what the Lord can assure us of. And so again, the point is don't Act like an unbeliever. Be aware that God is aware of everything in our life, which is a good thing if we're following Him, but a very scary thing if we're not. And then very quickly, I want to go to Matthew 23. Matthew 23. Because I, I like in my own study, one thing that I enjoy seeing uh, as we read various parts of Scripture is how they fit together. Some more directly than others. But I think there is a connection here uh, in uh, Matthew chapter 23. This is probably the most scathing rebuke the Lord has. Several times he'll say, Woe to you, scribes, Pharisees, hypocrites. I mean, he doesn't hold anything back, does he? But what we're going to find is the very people who ought to know better, they're acting as if there's no God. They're practicing atheism. Notice um, as, as we uh, look at this passage. First of all, he says, Then Jesus spoke to the multitudes and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. So we're talking, he's talking directly to the scribes and Pharisees. These are the elite of the religious people uh, of the Jews. And he told the people, You do what they say to do. And you might think, well, what's the problem then? The Lord's talking to the scribes and the Pharisees, and He says, you listen to them. Well, it doesn't stop there, does He? Therefore, whatever they tell you to observe, that observe and do, but do not do according to their works, for they say and do not. See, they're acting as if it doesn't really matter what they do and the actions that they're taking. And so the Lord has some very harsh things to say about who ought to be the religious elite, as I said before. And so here's what he's, he's saying about them. He said, first of all, you don't want people to enter the kingdom of heaven. You think, well, that sounds like an atheist, doesn't it? It does to me. But that's what it says in verse 13, that you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. You don't go in yourself and you don't want anybody else to. 
He's talking there about the Lord's kingdom. Oh, no, we don't want you doing that. Oh, yeah, I know we can't deny that Jesus is the Messiah. We see the miracles. We see the prophecies He's fulfilling. But we're going to act like, no, we, we just don't want you to go that way. Well, they're acting like atheists. Verse 14, they have no conscience for the widow. They don't care. They, they devour widows' houses, uh, take advantage of, of their weak state at that time. If you were a widow, you were really exposed to um, uh, a society that would take advantage of you. You had few protections. And so they didn't have any conscience for, for the widow, even though the, uh, you know, Paul would teach him to Timothy in 1 Timothy 5 to take care of those who are widows indeed. And that you take care of your own as well in 1 Timothy 5 verse 8. And they just wanted to be followed in verse 15. That's all. And, and that reminds me again of atheists. They just want you to believe what they believe. They don't like it when you disagree with them. They don't really want to be tolerant. They preach tolerance, but they're very intolerant. They saw no value in the temple of the Lord in verse 16 down through verse 22. They, would have a, they had a whole system about taking oaths and swearing. And uh, they say, well, if you swear by this, that's not as binding if you swear by this other. And so, which would you think would be more binding on you, to swear by the temple? No, it was more binding to swear by the gold in the temple. And the Lord said, what kind of thinking is that? It's not like people who believe in God. They're practicing, again, the, the spirit of atheism. And they knew nothing, the Lord said, about justice and mercy and faith there in verse 23. And they were the sons of those who killed the prophets. Now there's a lot more that could be said in that chapter, but you see the, the point I'm trying to make. They're practicing atheism, and they're supposed to be the religious elite of the Jewish people. As a result, here's what the Lord said. Serpents, brood of vipers, how can you escape the condemnation of hell? You would think he might say that to people who didn't believe in God. Well, he probably would. But here are people who say they do. They are believers. And yet, they don't act like it. And the Lord said, here's the conclusion. And so they were practicing in all practicality, practicing atheism. And so we need to be careful. It's, it's one thing, as the Lord talked about in Matthew 7 as well, it's one thing to say, Lord, Lord. It's quite another to mean it. It's one thing to, to say, I believe in Jesus. Quite another to practice that. And that's what the Lord wants. He said in, in Matthew 7, He said, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father, who is in heaven. And so I hope that we're seeing better through the scripture. That, that's our goal. Keep reading. Stay in the word. And let's, as the old saying is, practice what we preach. Don't practice atheism. Practice your faith. Keep it that. This morning there might be someone here who needs to respond to the call of the gospel. God does see and God does hear. And he's aware right now of what you need to do. And chances are you know too. It's just where you do it. If there's someone here not ready to meet the Lord, why not get ready? We, we'd just be honored to help you in whatever that need might be. And that can happen this very moment, the next few minutes. Just come forward. Let us know what that need is. Won't you come now while we stand and sing? Soon and very soon we are going to see the King. Soon and very soon we are going to see the King. Soon and very soon we are going to see the King. Hallelujah! Love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your might and Love all of mankind as you would love yourself. Love, love, Lord your God, your 